From beneath the surface of the ocean, a set of mysterious islands arises and mystifies the seafaring travelers of Maraheim. Strange happenings begin to unfold across the world. The guardian tree of the Duanis that ensures a plentiful harvest becomes diseased, causing their bounty to dwindle. The Delvin Sky waterfalls that provide fresh water to their basin home begins to dry up. The pork caravan herd that carries their homes on their back can no longer find their unique food source, forcing the porks to traverse the high seas in search of something they will eat. Many of the inhabitants begin to leave their homelands to settle on the newly discovered islands. These curious islands are found to be plentiful in food and resources, so a new life begins on the Risen Islands. In addition to food and resources, ancient writings begin to surface telling of a series of clues leading to a mythical artifact that could be the key to saving your people. You are a champion from one of the three prominent kingdoms tasked with ensuring the prosperity of the new island settlements, and perhaps uncovering the key to restoring balance to your homeland. While resources appear plentiful, tensions are high as the Denzians of the Maraheim struggle for survival. The Risen Islands are not without conflict and old alliances mean nothing in this frontier land. Captaining your trusted ship, armed with cannons, clues, and cunning, will you take on this quest? Welcome to Quest and Cannons. Howdy, I'm Jay Berg. Today, I want to talk to you about Quest and Cannons. This is a one to six player game for ages 14 and up that plays in about 20 minutes per player. That is from Short Hop Games. It is one of their first games but they've packed a lot into it and they've done a great job being their first time game. Uh, I have a pro top uh, copy that I've gotten to play with, learn about, and just based on the quality they've put into this, I can only expect so much more from a final production. Uh, this is for ages 14 and up. Granted, a lot of that's probably because there's a lot of small pieces. Um, and a little bit of the gameplay can take some time to get into just because there's a lot of fine detail rules that once you start to learn them, smooth sailing. In Quest and Cannons, you can play as characters from three different kingdoms. You can either play as a Dwani, and the Dwanis are known for their luck with the dice. They can change their luck and modify the dice to be a six, or either when you're attacking with cannons or when you're traversing some dangerous sea spaces and you have to risk rolling against a Kraken, you can modify a dice to a six if you have extra loot cards. Or you could play uh, as from one of the porks from the Pork Kingdom. Now, these are better known for their resource manipulation. So say you have one type of resource and you really need something different, you could trade in a loot card to modify what you have so you may not have to travel across all the islands to go find that one resource that's really hard to get to. Or maybe instead you like to move really fast, soar across the board. You could play as one of the Delves. These are known for flying and moving across the board faster when getting rid of extra loot cards. One of the great things about this game is each player actually gets their own ship board that they can then put their character card into. You also have slots for all your cargo, your cannons, and even your sails up top along with any additional loot ship cards that modify and upgrade your ship along the way. So you can keep everything on here. It keeps you organized and it keeps gameplay really straightforward and easy as you're going along. The goal of this game is to get to a certain level of prosperity before another player or team. Now, depending on how many players or the number on each team will determine the number of prosperity points you need to earn while playing. One way to earn the points is to attack, shoot cannons at other ships and sink them so they sink into the sea. They do stay in the game, but they have to restart essentially without certain cargo and back at their starting space. Or you could complete map clues. So if you reach certain destination spots and and then turn this in, um, 
then you can basically get a choice of a loot or prosperity point. And then hold on to these, get back to your starting position and earn another point as well. But the main way you get points is quests. So throughout the game, you're gonna be sailing around, gonna pick up different resources at the different islands, and then you need to turn them in at different locations as well. So once you find the right combination to carry all those components to the correct location, complete your quest, get your points along with some other bonuses. Overall, this game was quick and easy to learn. The setup had a lot of components, but were really easy to identify, sort out, and figure out how to use them. Uh, there's a place for everything that you used, and as soon as you started playing, turns were quick, easy to execute, and the downtime to, between turns was very minimal as you were paying attention to where everyone else was sailing, if they would attack you, if you might want to attack them next. So it never felt like you were sitting around and waiting for things to happen. It was you're actively paying attention at all times to stay involved. The rule book is very easy to read, laid out really well. It tells you everything from components to layouts, setups, how each action works, what are free actions, if you want to play solo, how to set that up. And it gives you several very good examples of turns and how that would look, either using sails, not using sails, attacking. And so I could see you easily handing this game to someone that has A, never played it, and doesn't play a lot of games, and being able to sit down and learn it by themselves. This game comes with a lot of components, and even though it was a prototype copy that I've been playing with and reviewing, it's a lot of very well done components. It has a lot of very vibrant, detailed artwork. It has player boards that are dual layered, so you can place your character onto it, along with a lot of the tiles that you've, you're collecting during the game and tokens that you're using. It, has, it uses multiple different types of and shapes of tokens from the resources you gather to the sails on your ship to the coins that you need to pay for certain things. And then it's going to be using, it has standees which have basically a picture of the character you're playing. And it sits in a little wooden boat that sails around the, the whole map. So instead of it just being a clear stand, they've integrated the theming into the stand itself. And then the standy picture part actually is the shape of a sail. So it looks like you have a boat sailing through the islands, which is a great way to integrate that kind of component, which I don't see often enough in games. Um, and then of course it comes with a lot of dice. Um, just, as you dive in, there's so much to explore and find out in this game that I'm gonna have a hard time covering it all alone. I want you to discover it on your own too. So come along with me, I'll show you some of it. And then you can discover even more on your own um, as there's plenty of other people that are gonna be doing reviewers, you're doing reviews, releasing content about it, which in preparation for the Kickstarter you can check even more out on that. So let's get into it. So that was Crushing Cannons uh, by Short Hop Games. This is one of their first games coming to Kickstarter this September. It's for one to six players, co-op, solo, and competitive. Ages 14 and up and plays in about 20 minutes per player. Now I really enjoyed it and I hope you will too. So thank you for watching. And as always, play games and spread joy.